Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and welcome to part three of my orchestral symbol series. Today we're going to be doing suspended symbols. We're going to cover all kinds of suspended symbols that you use for orchestra, pit work, even some drum set stuff. So we'll cover regular suspended symbols as well as splash symbols, china symbols, and some effects symbols, even some sizzle symbols. You see here on this table, I have lots and lots of different mallets, and I have a bow, we'll teach you how to bow a symbol, and effects for creating sizzle symbols. So we'll go over each of these things. First though, I wanna show you how to suspend a symbol correctly. There's two ways to do this. All of you know about regular symbol stands, I'm sure, and that's a stand like this with a felt. Make sure you use that, all right? And a protective sleeve for the symbol. Please always do that. Otherwise, it'll rattle and eventually damage your symbol. So this is the second best way to suspend a symbol. The first choice would always be one of these symbol hangers, as you see here. So these are made by several companies, Sabian, Zildjian. This particular one's made by Lafima. They're all basically the same. I like this one because it, it bounces less. It's a little thicker. So by bouncing, I mean this. Some of them are made so thin that when you play them, they fight back. They bounce too much. It makes it difficult to play. This one, though, is not too bad. Now, there's several advantages uh, for using one of these over a regular straight cymbal stand. First of all, you will get no rattle whatsoever from these. As long as your base is solid, there's nothing up here for the cymbal to rattle on. It's suspended on this cymbal strap. And again, we went over this in part one, uh, how to tie the knot, how to connect the strap. Today, I'll also be using these marble straps because they're easy to get in and out. This stand does not absorb any of the sound of the cymbal. So when you play on a regular suspended cymbal stand, Put this down here for now. What happens is that stand absorbs the sound. If you put your hand on the lower part of the cymbal stand, you'll feel that vibration. It actually travels right through. So that's going to kill part of your sound. Also, the cymbal is sitting down on something, which muffles it. All right? Here, it's hanging. So it's less likely to be muffled or inhibited. Its movement's less likely to be inhibited. So I have two symbols here that are similar in sound. This is an old K, very old. This is from the 1940s. And this is a Sabian traditional, I mean, I'm sorry, Paiste traditional symbol, a pretty old one from the 1990s, some of the first ones. And these are beautiful symbols. And here's the K. So you'll notice one thing is when I hit this symbol, how it's able to freely move for a long time. This one, it's moving in one direction or two directions back and forth. This one's moving like that. So there's more movement on the cymbal, which means the cymbal's gonna ring a little longer, has a fuller sound. And you can compare them one to the other, but take my word for it, it makes a huge difference. So I would definitely look into investing or making one of these cymbal hangers uh, for your suspended cymbal work. But again, there's nothing wrong with a regular suspended cymbal stand. I use them all the time. It just will sound better to use this hanger. So let's talk about the good qualities of a, of a really good suspended cymbal. First of all, it needs to be thin. The best overall size for a suspended cymbal is anywhere from 16 to 20 inches. You can also use smaller ones, but they're gonna sound much thinner and there are parts written for small suspended cymbals all the time, especially in a lot of the movie soundtracks that I do, the movie scores. They'll sometimes write for three different size cymbals. 
but a lot of these symbols that we like to use for this are very thin so thin that you can bend them and that's a good sign of a good suspended symbol you need to be able to bend it all right now a lot of these old K's were like that you could bend them the thinner ones that is so they make fantastic suspended symbols they're extremely dark and some of the newer, newer symbols like Bosphorus uh, Istanbul several of these companies some of the K Zildjian's and of course the Paiste traditionals which I have here are fantastic also the Sabian um, uh, V series are great okay and I'll have some of those here as well to show you I think <laughs> all right so when you strike a suspended symbol you want to use a mallet it can also say with stick all right now lots of times it'll say with timpani mallet I don't like using timpani mallets on suspended symbols Back then, when a lot of this music was written, they didn't have marimba mallets. They just didn't exist. The marimba didn't exist. So the thing that you'd want to remember is that a timpani mallet, unless it's pretty hard, is not going to get as much sound out of a cymbal than a wrapped, a tightly wrapped uh, vibe mallet or marimba mallet or any kind of yarn mallet. All right? So if I play this mallet on this cymbal, that's the sound I get. If I play a harder timpani style felt, hopefully you can hear that. You'll hear more of the mallet, which is what we don't want. Now there's lots of different kinds of mallets that you can use. Here's a vibe mallet. This is a nice old uh, Good Vibes Gary Burton mallet. Now that's a harder mallet, so you get more, more attack. And um, Here's some really nice uh, Malatek mallets that I like a lot. So you see it's a bigger mallet, it's got a mushroom design, and it's got a harder core but lots of yarn there. So you don't get as much attack sound, it's mostly all cymbal. Now here's a well-worn pair of Vic Firth Beckin mallets that I use a lot, obviously, and so they've been used so much they're worn out and that will happen eventually as you play on a cymbal especially one with grooves it will wear out your mallet so just be prepared for that they'll wear out no matter what you do with them but these I've used for years and years and right now they're so worn out I need to rewrap them okay another set of Vic Firth Beck and Mallets are these softer ones bigger ones And they're great for general playing. Not real loud, but, but soft enough so you don't hear the mallet you hear mostly cymbal. A couple mallets uh, that I really like are made by a company called Dragonfly. These are wrapped in some sort of stocking material. And these are great. Now on the thicker cymbals, they don't work as well. But on thinner ones, they're gorgeous and they have more weight to them. So you can just drop it and get a really nice sound. So I've been using these a lot. They also have a drumstick back, so they're a little thicker than, than normal marimba mallets, so you can play with sticks. So that's another benefit. So these are made by Dragonfly. They make a few pairs of these cymbal mallets, different sizes. Now, of course, you can use a stick. And let's talk about using a stick on a cymbal. When you play, you want to use a glancing blow like this. You never want to play right into the cymbal like this. That's just harsh, okay? And it's going to probably you know, break the cymbal eventually. So always play with a glancing blow. Plus it looks better. And it's just an elegant flick of the wrist, all right? You can also play with the long part of the stick body on a cymbal like this.
that's a little more powerful than just using the bead or even the butt of the stick. So lots of choices. You can even play on the edge with the stick. And that's very effective, especially on drum set stuff, all right? So it's kind of a harmonic. Now, all these cymbals are going to have bells. And it's important because sometimes parts are written for cymbals that say on the bell. So uh, unless you want to use a flat ride, get a cymbal with a nice big bell if that part comes up, so you have that. All right, so let's talk about a few little devices we can use uh, to make the cymbal sound a little different. Uh, I'm gonna talk about sizzle cymbals later on in this video, but if you need a quick fix for a sizzle cymbal, you can get these little sizzlers. They're made by Gibraltar and other companies, and basically you just put that on there and you hit the cymbal, and it sizzles a little. All right, play a roll. Now, that does muffle the cymbal a little bit, so it's always better to use a real sizzle cymbal, which, again, we'll show you in a little while. But sometimes you can only have room for one cymbal, or you might just have one cymbal. So if that's the case, one of these works great. Another way to do that is with one of these old camber, I think it's... I think, or uh, I'm not positive of the name of the company. I'm sure one of you guys will write in and tell me. It's not Camber. Camber makes symbols. Uh, Canon. I think it's Canon. And I knew it was something with a C. And these screw on to the symbol, uh, stand like this. Now, the problem is they don't work with any of the new, they're so old that they don't work with any of the new symbol stands. So you have to use an old symbol stand like a Ludwig or a Swingerland that have thinner threads or get an attachment to do that. But we'll hold it here for now, and I'll show you what that sounds like. So that's actually a better thing to use than this, because it does not muffle the cymbal. So these are great if you can find them. I found a couple used on Reverb a while back. Uh, I, actually, they were brand new, and I bought them. Um, they were in packages. I got a pretty good price, and I use it all the time. So this is a better device. And also, one great thing about it is it, I don't know if you can see that, it actually folds up. So you can use it on tiny symbols. Just a brilliant device, okay? So these have been around a really long time. I'm not sure they're made anymore, but I'm sure someone will write in and tell me, which is a good thing. All right, so that's made by Canon. It's a symbol sizzler. Now, sometimes you have to muffle a cymbal. So, obviously, you can do this. But many times you have to use two hands. And if that's the case, you have a couple options. You can put your body against the cymbal like that. You know, here, it's too far away right now for me to do that. But when you play and muffle it with your body, that's one option. You can even use moon gel on a cymbal. Don't leave it on there. It'll stain your cymbal but it'll muffle it just a little. So there's certain uh, pieces in the rep, like Night on Ball Mountain by Ripsky Korsakoff, that have cymbal parts that do this. where the symbol has to be pretty dry. So it's important you have some way of doing this. Moon gel works fine. Another way might be to use these, use these snare drum mufflers that I make. This is more severe, so you can put that on like this, and that'll really muffle the symbol. Okay, and there's no noise because I'm clipping it on a piece of leather. 
So just be prepared to be able to do that if the conductor wants it more articulate or dry. You'll need to do that. All right. Now, you can also do some effects on cymbals with different beaters. So lots of times uh, composers like Stravinsky, uh, especially like the Firebird Suite, he'll write for metal on cymbals and gongs. He does that in Rite of Spring and uh, several different uh, pieces. He'll have scrapes like this. All right, just as effects, it's very common. Uh, and all, even playing the cymbal with triangle beaters is a common thing you'll have to do. So if you do that, I like these teardrop beaters because you can go from soft to loud. So they're shaped in a conical way where the top is thinner and it gets wider so you can move up and down on them. So that's a good thing. And then also be prepared to scrape the cymbal like that. And you do that on gongs as well. Also, if it says cymbal moan or growl, you can use a Super Bowl mallet. Like that. There's two sizes of these, or probably more. Uh, the small one sounds like this. So that's the kind of effect that would need to be mic'd or nothing else happening to be heard. All right, you can also use these on gongs. They're very effective. Now, you can also bow cymbals. That's very common. So try to use a horsehair bow and rosin it up real good. This is one case where using this kind of stand, the hanger, is not great because it wants a move. I'll show you. See, the cymbal wants to do that a little more. If you use a regular stand, it doesn't move so much. And a lot of times I'll just put my fingers right on the tip of the bell, right around the cymbal sleeve to keep that cymbal stable. Okay, and here it's more difficult. See how it's choppy? So when you do a bowed cymbal, much easier to do it on a regular cymbal stand. So bowing is very common in all kinds of percussion uh, situations. So know how to do that and use it and get yourself a good bow. Again, horsehair, I talked about this in my waterphone video, horsehair is the best thing. And rosin it up with some pops rosin. That's the best rosin. So we'll put that aside. Okay, good. Now, let's get into some techniques for playing. Generally, um, you want to just strike the cymbal about three inches from the edge, so about right there, to get the best possible ring and impact. And ideally, you want to use the weight of the mallet to get your sound. You don't want to force it in like this. You just want to let that mallet drop. Okay? Now, if you're feeling theatrical, you can use two mallets. And again, you want this to look good. You know, you're playing live music. You're in an orchestra. It's beautiful. You're all dressed up nice. The lights are on really bright. Everything's really, really nice. Beautiful concert hall. So when you play, you want to use some sort of motion, just like all the other instrumentalists, okay? Remember, you're not a drummer. You're a musician, so... So almost act out the way you hear the sound, all right? Now you can play drier, and by doing that you can move up a little on the cymbal. Versus this. So it's possible to get many, many different sounds out of the cymbal by just moving a couple inches up or down, all right? Now rolling uh, is pretty difficult if you have to play forte piano, in other words, loud first and then soft. So here's the way I do it. I strike the cymbal and then I wait and then I ride the wave, so like this.
don't do this. Okay, that's butchering the symbol. It sounds bad, it's harsh. So again, I'll do it on this K. And this is the same thing you do when you play low timpani forte pianos. You hit, you wait, and then you get on board, okay? So that's the way I would roll like that. Now general rolls, you can just play on either end of the cymbal, like this. this is the way I do it. You can do it like this too if you want. This just keeps the cymbal from moving too much, especially if you're playing on this kind of uh, hanger, like this. And again, I keep using the term, but riding the wave is important. Once you get in the groove of the cymbal's reaction, it's easy. There's a piece by Sibelius called En Saga, not my favorite piece of music, but there's like cymbal rolls that go on for like four minutes and you're just rolling and rolling and literally you, you end the piece like this. And in that case, that's the end of the piece. You end the piece with the orchestra. It's basically a solo. So uh, it's very important to not muffle the cymbal, you leave it ring, and what I do is I leave the cymbal mallets on the cymbal to muffle them slowly, like this. And if I press in, I can muffle it even faster. That's it. So don't grab it, don't muffle it. All right, now loud cymbal rolls, you want to do a little bit of an, an attack, so... but never go too fast. Don't do this. Because, you, again, you'll butcher the cymbal. You'll hear individual strokes. You want it to sound full. So you see, when I'm doing those crescendos, I'm... Uh, making my roll faster, similar to timpani, to get those crescendos. So I'm speeding up my roll, not necessarily uh, putting more energy into the way I'm hitting the cymbal, just playing faster, a little more energy, all right? Now, when you choke a cymbal, you do this. Don't do this too fast, all right? Nothing should be that short. A concert hall is going to ring, so you're activating the hall when you're playing anything sharp. So go with that ring. Don't do this. All right, this. And that cymbal might hum a little. You're, I'm sure you're hearing that on these sensitive microphones. That's okay. In a concert hall, once you get away from it, you won't hear that. All right, good. So I think that covers our first part. So next we're going to do uh, some comparisons between several types of cymbals. So let me get all that organized, and I'll be right back. So I've gathered up several suspended cymbals, and we're going to alternate these and compare them against each other. So as I said before, this is a piesty, thin, traditional. They also make them an extra thin. I find the extra thin a little bit too thin, so just the regular thin works great. This is a really old K, an original K. Now, over here, you probably can't see it on the camera yet. I have a symbol called a Sultan. These were actually the original Istanbul. Everybody's familiar with Istanbul symbols. These were the original ones that came out of Turkey back in the 1980s. Before they were named Istanbul for about a year, they were named Sultan. They were trying to get distribution, and they changed the name to Istanbul. These were amazing symbols. I have several of them, uh, very, very similar to the old Ks. Uh, these are the really, really old ones. So here's what this symbol sounds like. Oh, part of the problem with some of these, I should just let you know, some of the old Ks, the hole is small on them, so they don't fit on all symbol stands, such as the case here. So what we do is we take that off and we put a different one on. So sometimes you're going to have to do that. That's actually a good thing you were able to see that. 
So a lot of the old Ks, again, on the newer stamps like Gibraltar, they have a thicker sleeves. Uh, what you can do is cut some surgical tubing, go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get some surgical tubing, and put that in there, and the smaller holes on the Ks will fit. Try not to enlarge the hole on the K with a drill. I've seen people do that. It kind of ruins the symbols. Now, if they're hi-hat symbols and they won't fit on a modern clutch, you might have to enlarge that hole with a drill. If you do that, take a block of wood that's curved, put it on a drill press, uh, and then slowly, and use a really good drill bit, uh, and then slowly drill that hole with a drill press. Don't use a hand drill. A drill press works better because you, you can crack that bell of that symbol. Anyway, so this is what the Sultan symbol sounds like. And here's the old K. So right away you hear very, very identical overtones. So these symbols work great together. It's a high and low 18. And it's good to have a high and low 18. Uh, in other words, it might say small, medium, large. Well, you don't have to always use sizes. You can use pitches. So if a symbol's a little heavier, it's going to be higher, as in this Sultan symbol. So these are great. So we'll put this away. Now, let's show you a modern K. This is a uh, dark, thin crash. So I say modern. This one's probably about 20 years old. This is a beautiful symbol as well. Compare that to the old K. And with a stick, all right, now this is a 17, uh, this symbol I just put up there, and um, it does sound lower though, it's thinner. Now before we go on, there's one little technique I did forget to show you a minute ago. Uh, if you have to do one-handed rolls, you can use two mallets in one hand like this. And this is especially useful when you have short rolls, like... So the grip is just like this. It's not a formal grip or a cross grip. It's just that. You're putting your thumb in the middle there, and you're just able to get those mallets close in enough so you can just go between them. And then, of course, your other hand is free to do anything else, usually play another instrument. So that's a useful thing. You can do a one-handed roll. If you play marimba, I play a lot of marimba, so I play a lot of one-handed rolls. That works as well. It's just you don't have as much control doing it, especially for the crescendos. Whereas this way, all you have to do is move your wrist and arm. Now, when you do this, I would suggest using rattan mallets because they bend. All right? That's, that's just a better mallet for, for this kind of thing. Anyway, I'd forgotten that before, and I wanted to make sure I put it in there. So this old K, this 17, sounds really good. Uh, a good thin symbol like this is always going to be a good suspended symbol. Now, let's talk about a symbol that I had up there earlier uh, when we did the Piatti videos. And this is that Sabian 18-inch uh, crash that I used a lot on that last video. So let's hear what that sounds like.
again, here's the old K for reference. So very, very similar. You know, it's hand hammered. Anything that's hand hammered is going to be dark like that. So that's another Sabian 18. So you're seeing a, a trend here. All, all of these thin hammered symbols sound really good as suspended symbols. And thin, but not too thin. Again, the test is to be able to bend them. If you can bend them, they're thin enough. This is a really interesting symbol. This is a Paiste uh, symphonic symbol. You don't see a lot of these. It's a 19 inch symbol. It's, it's a good symbol. It's loud. And I'll take it off of this so you can hear what it sounds like on a stand. And as compared to the K, So that's that's a good sounding suspended symbol. Dark. Uh, it's a it's not really hand hammered, and the alloy Paiste uses is different. But uh, these symbols are are gorgeous. Uh, I believe that they're in the sound creation line, so that's still around. So you can pick these up. The two thousand twos and six oh twos they're not as good as suspended symbols. They're great drum set symbols, but not as good as suspended. But this sound creation line, and of course the traditional series are wonderful suspended symbols. So that's a Paiste. Next, we have another old K, but this time we have a 16 K. So this is about the same vintage as this one, and we'll hear the difference. <laughs> So they work together really well. In my opinion, this 16 is a little too thick to use as a suspended symbol. I have used it because it matches in timbre to this old 18, but it's a little bit heavy. Uh, but it does sound great with a stick. And I use this one on drum set quite often. Next we have a Sabian Artisan symbol. Uh, these have the V on them. Okay. Uh, these are really great symbols as well. So highly recommended. Again, you can bend it a lot. It's very thin. So these are beautiful. They all sound different though, the artisan symbols. They're made like the old, older Ks. All right, so they're hand hammered. And they're really good. I'll show you a few others in a minute. So let's talk about some other Paiste traditional symbols. And I brought a few here that we'll talk about. I have a whole bunch of these. When, uh, I have an endorsement with Paiste, so when they first came out, they sent me every symbol in that line, which was really great. So I have the original ones, um, and they're, I, st I use them all the time. They're fantastic symbols. Really, some of my favorite symbols are those. So I have every size imaginable, uh, two or three different ones. But my favorites for this application are the thin, just like the 18 I had up here. Here's a 16, and this is a thin crash. Now, you can't expect that to put out as much sound as an 18, but for, for light stuff, it's gorgeous. And with the stick, it sounds beautiful. And again, uh, with our benchmark K. Very similar in timbre. Very similar. All right, so that's a 16. Now we also have here a 14. A very nice symbol as well. Now we're getting into the smaller sizes, kind of special effects symbols. If it says small, 
suspended symbol, this would be an option, or a 16. Uh, it's a great, great symbol for drum set. And it's good for chokes, too. Very effective. All right. Then we get into the smaller range, which would be considered splash symbols. So I consider a 12 and below a splash symbol. This is a traditional splash. It's been well used. And these are really nice as well. So. And then I always keep a very small splash around. An eight is a good size. So this is a, a, a 10. And then an eight is good to have as well. So here's what that sounds like. And I believe this is a Peisty sound formula splash. I've had this for so many years. It's a really nice splash. Uh, I really like the Peisty splashes. They're very consistent and they all sound good. So if I was going to get a splash symbol, I'd buy a Peisty. And they're pretty tough. I, I've used them a lot, never broken one. And I have broken a few Zildjans before. So highly recommended. So that's all we have here. And we're going to take a little break and I'm going to show you some special effects symbols. Finally, we have some special effects symbols. There's lots and lots and lots of these. The first type are Chinese symbols. So these date back really far to China, Wuhan, China. And these symbols can be played upside down like this for drum set. It's commonly you'll see them that way. Or right side up like this. So if you want a really authentic sound in Chinese symbol, I would go with a Wuhan. So I have several sizes of these. Uh, today, I brought out a 16 and a 20. These are good sizes to have. And I'll show you the difference. Here's the 20. And the 16. Now, when you play them upside down, there is a difference in sound, as you'll see. This is a great rock and roll symbol just to bash the hell out of it when you're playing. And this sounds great, too. So they make great accent symbols, but lots of times in orchestras and shows, you'll see a Chinese symbol uh, written in. And you'll, so you'll definitely need one of these. Now, there's different types of Chinese symbols. Let me put these away. So you have swish symbols, the famous uh, Zildjian swish knocker from the 60s. Peisty made some really nice swish symbols, OK? They're not as turned up as the um, Chinese symbols. They're also lacking that uh, almost uh, high bell, the square-like bell, OK? So this is a really nice symbol. Okay, so some people call this a Chinese symbol, but I call this a swish. Now, sometimes you could put rivets in these, which sounds tremendous. I have a really large one here. This is a 22 swish. Uh, I use this a lot on drum set. If you've watched my jazz videos, drum set jazz videos, you'll hear this symbol. 
This is a beautiful symbol. These are not meant to be played upside down, so don't. You'll mess them up. All right? And they're also very fragile. If you look at this thing, you see where it's kind of bent up. So they're so thin, you can bend them. It's okay if they bend a little, because they're not meant to be played like Piatti. Uh, but you gotta be careful you don't crack them. And this one I put rivets in, uh, and the other one I keep without rivets, okay? Now, there's some other kinds of Chinese symbols. I'm fond of this really old, cheap atlas symbol. I can't remember where I got it, but it's very funky. It's got a pretty cool sound. And as, as you see, the, the risen bell, the, the cup there as it comes up, that's a real Chinese design, just like the Wuhan design. You see the comparison. So that's what makes it a Chinese, in my mind anyway, that bell, all right? And also it's turned up a little more on the edges, not as flat like a swish. Now, there's also uh, simulated Oriental symbols. Some of these Zildjian sound effects lines, uh, they used to call this the Crash of Doom. <laughs> I have several of these, uh, four of them, in fact, and they're very cool sounding. Not good for much else other than a special effect. It looks like, you know, someone screwed up and you know, then they sold it. <laughs> so these are pretty messed up. All right, but they're neat. And I got four of them for close to nothing uh, several years ago at some sale or something from a music store. So that's called the Crash of Doom. Now, let's talk a little about rivet symbols because earlier I told you I would show you one. So this is a sizzle and I made it. I, I basically uh, put rivets in lots and lots of symbols because I love the way that sounds. This is an artisan, a Sabian artisan, that I popped some rivets in. And this is a really, really nice uh, sizzle symbol. So what makes a good sizzle symbol a good sizzle symbol is that it'll ring a long time. So normally, you gotta you gotta pick these symbols carefully because you can go ahead and poke holes in your symbol and not have a good a good sizzle symbol. It needs to be pretty thin, not too heavy, or else the rivets will just stop sometimes. Okay. The other thing about it is you need to drill it. Um, you know, you need to have a certain amount of rivets for the particular symbol. So for these 20s, I like to use eight rivets normally. Sometimes I'll fix a crack by putting rivets in. If you look at my K Zildjian video, you'll see how I did that. But uh, this, there was nothing wrong with this symbol. I just drilled it. And I'll probably do a separate video on how to put rivets in. It's really easy. Uh, there's no mystery to it. Uh, you, you do not use a hammer, though. Use a drill press, okay? Or you will... Uh, in the old days, he used to, to use a hammer and uh, sort of a little pointed screwdriver and knock the holes in them. You do not want to do that. You'll crack it. So that's a Sabian Artisan uh, light ride that I put these uh, rivets in. All right, let's get to some special effects uh, symbols. So first one that's common, this is an ice bell. It's not really a symbol, but it's the bell of a symbol. So big bell. Uh, this is common. You will see this quite often in parts.
Back when I was a kid, uh, set drummers used to use these to ride on. It more sounds like a ship's bell, but uh, you can't do much with it. In other words, it doesn't really roll well. But struck with metal, it sounds good. So that's an ice bell, okay? Several companies make them still. I think this is a UPIF. I'm spelling that right. This is a really, really old one. Again, from the from the 70s, all right? Also, LP makes them as, or used to make them as well, too. Other versions of this uh, are these radial symbols. Um, radia, they're called. Uh, Sabian makes them. They're really nice, actually. I like them a little better. So these are great. It's kind of like a modern ice bell, and they, I think they make several sizes. I think this is a 10, and this is an 8. They probably make a 12, and even, um, they might make an 11. I'm not positive about that. But I know they make one more size than this. So those are radius symbols. They're pretty pricey, though, unfortunately, but they sound great. And it's a good alternative to an ice bell, a little more musical. Next, we have these prototype Sabian. Uh, devices. These are kind of like ribbon crashers. I love these things. Let's see if we can get this. It's going to be a little long. Oh well. <laughs> we'll move it out. There we go. Okay. So they look really cool. Lots of drummers use them on drum kit, but I've also used these for the, with the symphony for metal effects on contemporary pieces. So that white noise sound sometimes is desirable for certain effects. Uh, I wrote a piece called Heavy Metals that's on a Tap Space website. You can hear these in that piece if, if you're interested. Okay, so those are prototype. They call them under construction. And they're probably charge a fortune for these things. And I cannot remember where I got them, so <laughs> sorry. All right. Finally, we have a couple of my favorite objects that you might consider symbols because they mount on a symbol stand. So I'll tell you a little story about these. I, um, I was doing some recording with Brantford Marcellus uh, several years back, maybe 10 years ago. And as you know, the great Jeff Watts plays drums, Tane, with him. And so I did several recordings with that group and because I'm an engineer as well. And he was using one of these in the middle of his kit and I'd, I'd never seen one before. And so I asked him, I said, hey, hey, man, what's that? He goes, oh, this is this thing. It's really cool. And check it out. You know, and he goes. So I was intrigued, of course, because I just love buying stuff. So he gave me the guy's name. Uh, and it's this guy, Frederico, Frederico Percussion. And he called them Pan Fans. I don't know if he's still around. This has been, I think he was sick at the time. I remember talking to him for a while about that, so I'm not sure. Hopefully he's still around. And so I bought two of these from him, and I love them. I use them for all kinds of cool effects. They're really fun, so any kind of metal thing. So these are great fun, and uh, he was just using it as sort of every once in a while he'd hit it like an accent when when they were when they were playing. So these are called pan fans. 
so very cool. There's all kinds of great symbol effects you can get. Uh, you'll see sometimes Bill Stewart be using his little cup chime. You'll hear that. Uh, a lot of jazz drummers use things for accents. It's very nice, very musical. So anyway, that'll do it for suspended symbols and effects. And I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please send me any questions you have. Thanks.